Bushfires are, without a doubt, one of the most dangerous events that can occur in Australia. They happen with little to no warning, and they can grow out of control in a matter of seconds after the first ember is sparked. Eastern Australia is one of the most fire-prone regions in the world, and as a result of this, the landscape is filled with plants that are more or less suited to being cooked alive. Evolution, hey? What a crazy beast of a thing. But it hasn't always been like this, and in this video, we're going to take a look at how long Australia has been burning, and what bushfires did to alter the landscape that once existed prior to the more fire-resilient eucalyptus trees overtaking and more or less suffocating the ancient ecosystem that once dominated this land. To no one's surprise, Australia has been gradually drying out over the past 15 million years. And, well, this gradual drying out has led to some incredible evolutionary adaptations. Certain species of Australian plants will drop seeds that will only germinate after a major bushfire has passed through, whilst others just bounce back after being completely scorched. But prior to the eucalyptus plants dominating virtually every corner and niche in Australia, there was a more ancient ecosystem that dominated here. Plants from the age of the dinosaurs more or less began to die out around this time, such as ginkgo or the wallamy pine, along with the many ferns, which amazingly still do exist and are one of the most resilient forms of plant life on our planet. Ferns be crazy. But when Australia began to dry out, the old forests were replaced with the evergreen fire-tolerant plants that Australia is known for today. Eucalyptus trees love being burned so much that they encourage it, both with the oils they release and with the level of resistance the dead and decaying leaves of the plants retain due to the oil, which sees it maintaining a high level of resistance to decomposition by fungal or microbial organisms because of it meaning all of this dead and decaying debris just kind of sits there, acting like the perfect kindling for when a fire occurs. Worse than this, though, is the fact that eucalyptus oil vaporises in the heat, and during hot days, a smoggy miasma overhanging a eucalyptus forest can be seen. And this smog is actually an extremely flammable gas, which in its own right can serve as the catalyst to many bushfires in Australia. But why has Australia been drying out? What started this? Well, after the breakup with Antarctica, the Australian tectonic plate begun its journey north, where it will eventually pass the equator. But at the moment, Australia is the driest inhabited continent in the world. 70% of it is either arid or semi-arid land, and the reason it's so dry is because we sit under the subtropical high pressure belt, which encourages the air to push down rather than up, preventing the lift required for rain. And that's the most simplified version of it that I could really think of, without going too far into it and making this video about Australia's climate. In 2019, one of the worst bushfire events that Australia has ever witnessed occurred, and lasted for several weeks. Over 3 billion animals are estimated to have been fatally impacted during these events. Fire and Australia are intimately tied at the moment. And Australian Aboriginals were smart in that they used this to their advantage, and they encouraged fires to promote more lush vegetation to regrow so that their hunting and foraging was optimised. And by doing this, the land has further changed even more so to one that is totally shaped by fire. But unfortunately, we're stuck with the bushfires for a very, very long time. The only thing we can do is try to work with it and lessen the impact that a bushfire can cause. Thanks for watching.